What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Azure DFS bringing you a brand new video. Today's video, I'm going over Thursday night showdown uh, between Detroit and Green Bay. This one seems like a really good matchup on paper, right? That's that's what we always base everything off of is on paper, right? It's got a 46 total. I believe some are at 45, but I think majority books have the total at 46. Um, Green Bay coming in one and a half point underdogs in this. Um, but I, I think it's a very close matchup, like top to bottom, nothing really stands out too, too big on either side, right? Um, Detroit having the advantage in the run game, Green Bay having the advantage in the tight end aspect, uh, quarterback kind of even, wide receiver kind of even, defense, e like everything is even, even the kickers, right? This is going to be a good one. Uh, this is also one that I have right now of not a lot of value, right? I don't have, as you guys can see on my key here, um, value is green, uh, injury, uh, yellow, red is fade, and then a light blue is like. So uh, pretty much have it based off of DraftKings pricing and FanDuel. Um, you can see the difference in, in pricing on sites. Uh, so let's start it off, right? So we're going to start with injury news because I, I don't think we can go through this list without talking about the injuries and how they affect each player. So on the Green Bay side, Aaron Jones uh, on DraftKings, 10,800, FanDuel 13.5, um, questionable. So we haven't gotten any news from it other than the practice statuses and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean anything. We, we won't know until game time decision. If I had to guess, I'd say he's active, but I would also factor in he's probably on a snap count at that, a hidden snap count, I would imagine. Um, so that affects someone like A.J. Dillon. That affects some of these other running backs like Patrick Taylor, who I think could be a value, right? Um, but Aaron Jones, questionable. Christian Watson, questionable, but everything leans towards him playing. Um, a lot of reports coming out that He's making his debut tonight, so that's something to look forward to. But don't bank on him playing, right? We've had news of a wide receiver expected out, and then right before game time, right when they have to put that injury uh, report out, he's active. So um, always, always wait until you get that last confirmation. It's an hour and a half, I think, before uh, game time to where that injury report has to be out, or the inactives. Um, not the injury report, inactive. So uh, look for Christian Watson, look for Aaron Jones. Those are uh, the two big names on Green Bay side. There's also some injuries. Um, we already know that Bach is out, Jenkins is out, Campbell's out. Uh, we're still waiting on uh, Alexander, uh, Gray, and another offensive lineman for Green Bay. So those are all really key factors. It's it's why you wait until that hour hour and a half of inactives before you lock everything in because those are game changers, right? Green Bay being down three offensive linemen starters is huge against a, a team like Detroit. Uh, and then on the defensive line, losing your best, arguably one of your best linebackers, your best defensive lineman, and your best corner. Like those are key aspects, right? Guys step up. Uh, Green Bay's offensive line stepped up last week. Only one sack allowed to the Saints, which is very impressive. Um, but there are things to keep an eye on and Detroit side it's not all the way similar but uh, offensive line they're kind of banged up as well too and um you look here I, I even have the note on it for the Packers defense of why I like them their second highest pressure rate and if Detroit's got two or three starters out on the offensive line that's key that's huge that is that is a game changer there so um, always look out for that, but on Detroit side, the fantasy aspect player we're looking at is David Montgomery. He's questionable, true questionable, right, going into this. So um, that dictates a lot of plays one way or another on both sides. So now that we got that, let's go to uh, just the highest salaried player. So Amon Ra, um, highest on DraftKings, third highest on FanDuel. Uh, I, I like him on both sides. I think he's one of the safer plays as far as getting a guy in there that's going to get you points, right? Projections, one of the highest. Uh, matchups, good for him against uh, Green Bay. Um, but anything can happen in the showdown. <clears throat> Amon Ra's been pretty banged up, so that's something else to uh, monitor. But everything leans toward him being healthy uh, or as healthy as he can be in this matchup. Uh, Averaging 20 fantasy points a game right now 
And like I said, if someone like Alexander's out, that's huge for someone like Amon Ra. Um, I like him on both sides. I'm okay with playing him. Next is Aaron Jones. Even if Aaron Jones does play, I do not like him on either side. I don't like he's the second most expensive player on DraftKings, uh, on FanDuel being the fourth most expensive player. Um, for for what he's done, right, Detroit's played really good against running backs so far this year. Um, Aaron Jones has a history of playing bad against Detroit, and especially the last two years, right? Um, year before, he had a, one of the biggest games of his career against Detroit. Uh, but lately, Detroit's been a, a tough spot for him. And just think about what Detroit just did to Bijan, right? Uh, and Tyler Algier, that whole running back room of Atlanta. Detroit was able to stop them. They haven't allowed over 100 rushing yards in a game so far this year. They're one of the better teams against running backs as far as fantasy points and stuff. Even real stats, they're very good against running backs. So Aaron Jones's price, I don't think is worth it, right? It's supposed to be a close game. It's supposed to be a high scoring game or higher scoring game. 46, I think, is kind of that uh, just above average total. If you start to hit the 50s, you're getting on a high total. But I, I'd say 46 is, is right there. Um, I, I just don't think it's worth paying up, right? I, I think both quarterbacks easily outscore Aaron Jones in this matchup. Um, both are, you know more expensive on FanDuel 16 and 15.5. So those are factors 31,500 on FanDuel if you roster both quarterbacks. On DraftKings, yeah, you're looking at nine, about 20,200 20, is the price. So that's almost half your salary right there. And that's, that's not capping. That's not the captain price. That's just the regular price. So uh, something to factor in. But Jared Goff, like I said, there's a lot of injuries I'm watching on both sides, on on both sides of both sides, right? Offensive injuries for Detroit, defensive injuries for Green Bay. Uh, offensive injuries for Green Bay, there's a couple, I wouldn't even say a couple, I'd say one guy maybe on Detroit's defense that we're watching for injury news. So three out of the four sides of the ball we're watching for for injuries. But Jared Goff has played really good against Green Bay. Now, uh, three and one in the last uh, two years playing them, which I think is huge. Uh, the road games, Jared Goff is not as good statistically if you go back and look at it. Um, but I believe with someone like Jameer Gibbs tonight, that can change a lot. I, I really like Jared Goff tonight as one of the more solid plays. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of value plays tonight, so um, I, this is a game where I pay up easily. Uh, probably not leave salary, but we'll see what it looks like on the final lines. Um, Jordan Love, you know, 98, so $600 cheaper on DraftKings, 500 on FanDuel, so not that much of a big difference there. Um, Green Bay allowing the lowest pressure rate um, to a quarterback in the league, but yet again, you have to monitor some of the uh, offensive line injuries. Detroit just had seven sacks last week against Atlanta. Um, Atlanta's got a really good offensive line as well, so we'll see what that looks like. But Jordan Love's been averaging well above 20 fantasy points a game, uh, and some of them have not been against easy defenses, right? Plays the Bears has a good game. Atlanta has a good game. New Orleans has a great fourth quarter. Uh, Jordan Love, though, I, I'm on Rod, Jared Goff, Jordan Love. Those are my three that I'm, I'm probably building my roster around, right? Uh, tonight um, as far as my majority ownership. Those are my three that I'm going to have. They have some of the highest projections. Jameer Gibbs, though, this is where it gets interesting. So we're watching the David Montgomery news. Regardless if David Montgomery is in or out, I like Jameer Gibbs. If David Montgomery's out, I like him a whole lot more, though. Um, 96 on DraftKings, so the fifth highest uh, salaried player. Uh, on FanDuel, you kind of get a discount, right? 12000 David Montgomery is more expensive and he's questionable than Jameer Gibbs on FanDuel. So FanDuel, I really like Jameer Gibbs' price in this slate. Um, Green Bay averaging 25.3 fantasy points a game to running backs. Has the third best PFF run block advantage, so that's something else to, to key in. And just the receiving game that he's doing, right? Obviously, they're getting someone like Craig Reynolds in. Uh, Zahneman Knight got a couple carries as well. But I believe Jameer Gibbs, if Montgomery is out, is due for a really big game. I think this is his big game breakout opportunity against Green Bay in primetime. So he's someone I'm watching. 
I'm, I'm getting ownership of him. If David Montgomery's out, I'm upping that ownership, though. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, this one I'm watching for the Christian Watson news. Uh, I think if Christian Watson's in, uh, I still like Dobbs, right? I, I think the two outside wide receivers, so Romeo Dobbs and Watson in this matchup, I, I prefer over Jaden Reed easily. Um, but if, if Watson's in... I mean, you look at the price difference. 600 less on DraftKings. FanDuel, you get a discount on Romeo Dobbs by 1000 So that's something to factor in, especially on the quarterback play. It's a $500 difference there. So that might be a factor when you're building your lineups on FanDuel. On DraftKings, 600 like salary matters, but $600 um, is not as crazy on DraftKings as it is FanDuel. Um, but yeah, if Christian Watson's in, I, I, I do like uh, Christian Watson regardless of the price i think he's a, a game changer for green bay obviously we haven't seen him with jordan loves so far in the regular season this year um a little bit of it last year i do believe we saw it uh if i can remember correctly but christian watson yes like if i'm going a green bay wide receiver it's christian watson first then romeo dobbs but it's close it's not anything significantly crazy um because Christian Watson can easily get re-injured um, on his hamstring, I believe it is. So that's something that comes back quite a bit. Um, but watch, he's out. Romeo Dobbs and becomes my easy number one wide receiver uh, for Green Bay. Then we go to the tight ends. We're, we're just going to tackle both tight ends really quick. On DraftKings, you get Sam Laporta at 8,000. On FanDuel, he's 10,000. So... Uh, DraftKings, he's at that mid-high price, right? Usually once you get to about 7 to about 6 k before you hit the backup quarterbacks. Uh, that's where you're kind of paying up. FanDuel 10000 it's almost the same thing, right? This is the area that you're you're picking pretty much one guy from, and then you're paying up on a couple, maybe paying down on a couple, uh, but that's kind of that mid-tier price. Um, one of the craziest stats, uh, I, I think he's tied for second or third uh on a 27 percent target share on routes um routes run so 27 percent of his routes he's being targeted which is crazy um could have the best matchup right if jair's in i think sam laporta has a really good matchup um green bay i mean you look at some of the tight ends they face cole Komet, i think had a decent game nothing crazy um Kyle Pitts, Juana Smith, yet again, good game, nothing crazy. Uh, and then the Saints, I mean, take Taysom Hill out, not really anything there. Um, but Sam Laporta is emerging as probably the best rookie tight end in this class so far. Between him, Ferguson, Musgraves there um, as well. But uh, Sam Laporta, number two target on this team. That's what it's looking like right now. Um so I'm okay with getting him in a lot of lineups. Uh, Luke Musgrave, you get a discount, right? You get a discount on both sites, a good discount at that. 1600 on DraftKings, 2000 on FanDuel. So if you want to get a tight end love, right, Luke Musgrave's there. And if Christian Watson's in, I kind of like Luke Musgrave a little more, right? Obviously, there's targets that have to go to Watson then, but maybe you get some better opportunities uh, with Musgrave. And you got to remember, Detroit has given up the most fantasy points two tight ends uh saw what Kyle Pitts and Juano Smith right Atlanta's played both teams Kyle Pitts Juano Smith had a good game against Detroit um so someone like Luke Musgrave who yet again is up there in targets uh also f second third on uh red zone targets as well that's something huge Christian Watson's in obviously that one changes quite a bit being uh, one of the most targeted red zone receivers so that's something to look out for um, but both tight ends, I'm okay with playing, right? David Montgomery, if he's in, obviously I'm going to have some type of ownership exposure to him, but I'm going to get more Gibbs exposure than I am David Montgomery. Uh, if Montgomery plays, I still don't hate it. I, I, I think he can have a game where he gets 10 plus fantasy points, but the price you're paying is kind of crazy. Like I said, on FanDuel, it's not all that crazy, right? Uh, DraftKings, you're getting a huge discount from Gibbs to Montgomery. Uh, so yeah, that's it for kind of that, that price range. And then we go to Josh Reynolds and then we'll 
keep going down a little bit. Uh, Josh Reynolds, number two tight or wide receiver for Detroit. Um, it, it's it's really weird, right? I think Green Bay's secondary has been really good. Saw what they did against uh, Atlanta, against the Saints for everybody not named Chris Olave. Um, so it, it's not the greatest matchup, obviously. Yet again, going to have exposure. But his price is that mid-price to where you're not getting a huge discount on him, but you're also not paying a whole lot for him uh, on FanDuel 9500 so kind of in that price range. Luke Musgraves right there at eight thousand. Laporta's there at ten. Um, I just don't see Josh Reynolds having a crazy explosive game. I think he is a guy that can be reliable for Jared Goff. We've seen it. Goff goes to him quite a bit in some uh, um, key situations. Comes why well, I think it's safe to say wide receiver two with Khalif Raymond being wide receiver three and so on and so on uh it's just the price right he's just a little too expensive on both sides he was 8500 on FanDuel and maybe 5200 where Khalif Raymond is on DraftKings that's a different story but for his price point I I don't like him I don't hate him either right he's he's neutral for me Jaden Reed though for Green Bay has in my opinion just looking at numbers looking at um obviously his target share is is high uh, but if Christian Watson's in, it looks like he has the worst matchup of the three wide receivers. Uh, now, we've seen guys with really bad matchups that have good games, so that could easily turn. Uh, it's just I'm not going to get as high of exposure on him as I am the other two Green Bay wide receivers if they're both healthy, right? Um, even uh, Dontavian Wicks, cheaper on... On DraftKings 600, but on FanDuel 1500, that's a huge discount. We've seen him have two really good games the last two weeks, and if Christian Watson's in or out, I'd rather pay uh, Wicks 7500 or 5000, uh, or pay up for Dobbs there. Um, the two outside wide receivers, Reed lines up in the slot quite a bit, so I'd rather pay for Wicks or Dobbs in this matchup. Um, obviously, on DraftKings, I have him as a fade. His price is just way too high for me. On FanDuel, that's a perfect price, right? So you look at the kickers, the defenses, some of the values. I think he's the best value on FanDuel. And if Christian Watson is out, he's the best value on FanDuel. If Christian Watson is in, that's a whole different story. Uh, then we're looking at defenses and kickers for value. So, uh, Clay Raymond, yeah, it's same thing. I If you're going to pick another Detroit Wide receiver, I'm going Reynolds over Khalif Raymond, if we're just being honest. Um, but, like I said, I'm not going to get a huge amount of exposure to either one of them. Riley Patterson and Carlson uh, are both interesting in this. So, I only like Patterson slightly better. Um, Green Bay's defense allows a 44% uh, touchdown rate um, in the red zone. So, that means a lot of field goals are being kicked against Green Bay. But Detroit has only kicked three field goal attempts. Um, or made at least three field goals. So Riley Patterson there at 4,800. I, I would get exposure to both kickers. I would get a decent amount if you're doing 150 line. I would get a decent amount of exposure to kickers in this matchup. Both of these kickers, three made field goals. So... On FanDuel, you're saving fifteen hundred, right, for for Carlson over Patterson. On DraftKings, there's not really a big difference. It's two hundred, so you're not getting a discount by paying down to Carlson and Patterson. I would just get a decent amount of exposure to kickers and defenses in this game because obviously the game total is forty six. It's a huge division game, though. Um, both offensive lines could be banged up, which could cause problems offensively. Uh, but if Green Bay's defense is kind of um, more banged up than what it appears, that's something to look out for. But yeah, uh, Detroit's defense, I'm okay with paying on both sides. Obviously, you're paying 9000 on FanDuel, DraftKings, 4000 So that's, that's pretty much my my value is 3,600 Packers defense, but 4,000 Lions defense as well. Um, like I mentioned, Green Bay is missing their two best offensive linemen, possibly missing a third offensive lineman, uh, and Detroit really getting a hold of uh, Ritter last week, seven sacks. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, defenses get hot. It's it's scary. Um, but 
Jordan Love got shut out for three quarters and still ends up with 20 fantasy points and um, 18 actual points. So that's something to look out for. But I'm okay with getting exposure to both defenses and a decent amount of exposure at that. Packers defense, right? Detroit's offensive line also banged up. But Green Bay's defense gets the second highest pressure rate, and I think it's at 37%. That's basically four out of every 10 plays Jared Goff's going to be pressured, right? Um, which is why I like Jameer Gibbs in this matchup. Dump off receiver. So um, The only other player that I, I'm really looking at is Patrick Taylor, and that's if Aaron Jones is out. Um, has more targets than A.J. Dillon. I, I don't love the run game for Green Bay, but... At 3,000, like, there, there's not a lot here. Craig Reynolds is another name, but Zonovan Knight's got some carries too, so that's something to also monitor. Um, Marvin Jones has kind of been slowly getting away out of that offense, right? Khalif Raymond getting more snaps. Josh Reynolds getting the snaps there. Um, and Laporta stepping up huge is one of those factors of Marvin Jones kind of not really getting snaps, so... Um, but yeah, there, there's not a lot to love value wise. Uh, we're looking at, uh, a mix of Patrick Taylor and Emmanuel Wilson splitting the RB2 work if Jones is out. If Jones is in, that's even worse. We're talking about two guys splitting running back three work. If that same thing for Reynolds and Knight, if Montgomery's in one of these two guys is probably out. If I had to guess. Uh, Montgomery's in. Both these guys are fighting for RB2 volume, so not a lot of love there. Marvin Jones, wide receiver three or four. I mean, he's kind of the guy I'm looking at as value. Like, out of all these players, Marvin Jones is just because he sees the field. Um, but the matchup's still not great. His price is not, like, Wicks is is, is on, on FanDuel if Christian Watson's out. Even if he's not out, I think Wick, uh, Wicks is a good value play on FanDuel. DraftKings just too high. On that defense, this is where I'm at, right? Brock Wright, it's just Laporte is playing so good that Brock Wright, you know, the volume he does get is very minimal. He's on the field to block for the most part. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it on this game. So, hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. If you guys are interested in joining to get these sheets on game days, uh Click the link for our Discord uh, and get our very cheap package, which includes this. So hope you guys did enjoy, and I will see you in the next one.